All right, I'm just going to skip the intro and you just, just let me rock and roll this. You just go. All right. All right. The timer is starting now. Just All right, let's do, let's do this. All right, All right, cheers, everybody. Thank you for staying for Fire Talks. Be woo! Cheers. All right, this is like super low. All right, before I start, I do have a disclaimer, and I, I think this is appropriate for most hacker cons. A lot of us enjoy adult beverages. It doesn't mean everybody needs to. I acknowledge that uh, there's water in the back, but for those of us that want to partake, we have some taste. Yeah, at the end, at the end. So you have to stick around for like 14 minutes. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly. So thank you all for staying through a lot of amazing talks. I am talking about absolutely nothing to do with InfoSec aside from keeping our sanity. So cheers to sanity. So when I was thinking about doing this talk, one of the things that came across my mind was about six, seven years ago on New Year's Eve, I'm sitting doing a pen test kind of alone, kind of having some champagne, not doing much else, kind of hating life. And I'm like, you know, there's a lot of other people at the time that were online doing exactly the same thing. Cough, cough over there too. Anyway, that being said, we enjoy things outside of InfoSec. And this is, happens to be one of the things that I enjoy outside InfoSec is, I don't know, booze and learning a lot about booze. <laughs> so. That being said, so what exactly do you say I do here? Well, aside from doing all the infosec shit that I normally do and giving talks that actually are about who I get to keep it like a secret that you can't Google and then surprise, you have all this great information. Nope, well, tonight you can Google everything I'm going to tell you. But most of it, I hope, you may or may not know. Okay, any non-drinkers in the crowd? Yay, round of applause to the non-drinkers. <laughs> Wait a minute, that wasn't even fair. That was like you were not drinking at that moment. <laughs> All right, anyway, that being said, you don't have to drink to learn about this stuff. A lot of it's really kind of cool history. So what, what our takeaways tonight are gonna be a little bit of history, a little bit of geography, some basics about scotch, basics about champagne, you know, kind of how to look amazing with knowing very, very little, and of course, pleasure. So, start things off. Whiskey, no, scotch. That, well, I'm used to having a screen over there. And a wireless mic, can I take this? <laughs> right? Um, all scotch is whiskey, not all whiskey is scotch. You're gonna notice a few reoccurring themes between both scotch and champagne as we kind of talk about it. This is yet again one of those fun ones. Who here knew that? Everybody, yay, Google, or common sense, whatever. So here's the basics of what you need to know about scotch. First of all, you want to impress your friends. Say, you know, whiskey was, comes from a Gaelic word for water of life. Yay, sounds impressive at a bar. Some of the other things about scotch that I'm sure you all know, where does scotch come from? Does scotch come from anywhere but Scotland? Yay, A plus so far. Okay, so what about the composition of scotch? Yes, malted barley. And if it's not primarily malted barley and it might be a malted corn, what would it be? Bourbon, all right, cool. Well, we're not talking about bourbon, but it was just a fun little side note, right? So malted barley, water, and fermented yeast, and fermented with yeast, basically, that's what scotch is. They, one of the other cool things about scotch, I'm sure most of you know this, is that scotch is clear until it's barrel aged and then you get all the lovely color or you get the color from the smoking and all that good stuff. So there's that. Another unique thing about scotch, scotch has no artificial enzymes. They're only allowed by law to put in it natural enzymes or nothing at all. And to all the judges that have spelling issues, Scotch whiskey is without the E, but there is whiskey with the E. So know the difference. If you're talking to a Scotch or a whiskey snob, they probably want to know it. So for our little geography buffs and people that don't know that the United Kingdom is not just the UK as far as London, Scotland's part of it too. This is what we're talking about. There are five Scotch regions. So most of the popular ones that we know about are 
primarily like the highlands you see a lot in Speyside. More than half of the distilleries are located in Speyside. I'm sure a lot of you will have a lot of, to interject on this, and we can talk about that later. So when I was first learning about scotch, this is one of the, the cool little things that made me remember how the composition worked. So I thought about the dad as a single malt, and I thought about the mom as a single grain. That being said, a dad and a dad makes this like really cool combination. The dad and the dad make a blended malt. The, the white, <laughs> this is gonna sound bad, the top dad <laughs> and the blue side dad, <laughs> to be diversified, make, <laughs> so basically, <laughs> I didn't even think about it that way. I'm trying to avoid the race card, now we're doing, uh, anyway, it's, it's past 10 o'clock, we can do these things. So the sideways dad and the top dad together, which are both single malts, can make a blended malt. The mom and the other mom, the two single grains, can make a blended grain. Now, the boring heterosexual mom and dad combination make a blended scotch, which, by the way, is boring and generally your cheapest scotch. So keep that in mind. See, I'm trying to bring diversity to this. Oh, well. Forget it, you guys. Let's just talk about how to drink it. Yay. What? Yeah. I, I know. I know, but, it's, but come on. It's Belushi. So that is a way to drink it. It was demonstrating of weed. It's picky people. Anyway. I know. That's why I'm here. Because I heart you guys. So I think one of the most important things that I've always learned is know your audience, especially when it comes to drinking scotch or whiskey. So the fastest way not to offend your audience is to know how they drink it. So, what? Rum, or rum, yes. Or rum that tastes like delicious whiskey works too. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so I've heard it every which way. The basic way to drink whiskey is to enjoy it and drink it whatever fucking way you want to. <laughs> right? So put, put milk in it if you want orange juice, what other other kinky shit you want with your whiskey, that's fine. But in knowing your audience, there are going to be the whiskey purists. Of course, you're going to put, you're not going to put orange juice in an 18 year. There's the, you can. You're probably going to offend most of this audience. But some of the, the typical, what? I, I will take harassing. It's totally fine. It's after 10 o'clock. We're having a good time. So typical ways to drink. For those of you that are not whiskey drinkers, some simple, easy ways to drink it is you can do it on the rocks, which is fine. Some people say adding an itty-bitty bit of water actually brings out the, the smell and aroma if you're actually trying to appreciate it. Some people that are purists are just going to drink it neat. Some people drink it cold. Yay, neat. <laughs> neat. So that being said, drink it and enjoy it is the bottom line for pleasure. So, oh, I'm doing good on time. Next to one of my favorite topics is bubbles or, and or champagne. Again, all champagne is sparkling wine. Not all sparkling wine is champagne. Oops, helps when I do that. So basics of what you need to know about champagne and some of the fun stuff. Oh, this is Fire Talks. I'm allowed to kind of go back to one cool little note about, about scotch, right? Going back, one little need to know, kind of fun little note about scotch. Uh, you guys may or may not, but a cool fact is that a lot of the, the very old scotch houses, it actually was the women that held the recipes. And a lot of times when the, the, the patriarchs died out, the, or the monarchs, ah, when the men died, the women actually ended up with the houses and kept the recipes and kept the, the lines going on. So, so it's about men and women, that's all. Ah, yes, that's, that's what I got for you. So back to bubbles and champagne. So what you need to know about that to impress your friends, if you even care, is that in the uh, around 500s, Romans were actually the first that actually planted the grapes in the region. And this is where I have a fun story. So the Benedictine monk, Dom Perignon, he was a perfectionist. So we all heard of Dom. I have a partially drinking bottle of Dom here that we're going to go into in a minute. Oh, you think it's me, right? No. No, no, no. Um, some of our, uh, our lovely other attendees decided to 
when I was sitting in the back of the room, grab the bottle and try to run out the door with it while you all were in here listening to talks. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> anyway, so one thing that they learned about champagne is that, I don't know, it has bubbles. It goes through this thing called carbonic maceration. And if you shake it, it sprays. So I believe they got it on themselves, on the door. What was it? Carbonic maceration. Maceration? Not masturbation. Yeah, maceration. I, corre I, I corrected. You, you could. I've, I mean, I guess you could I've use champagne for that. that I wouldn't I suggest using Dom for that unless you get all, anyway, whatever. <laughs> you, you fancy InfoSec people. Anyway, back to my story. I invited them to stay because I figured that if they're swiping a bottle down, they actually should maybe know a little bit about it and what happens when you run with it and it shakes up and sprays. That being said, our lovely, lovely Dom, he was a perfectionist. He actually, when he was making his wine, he, they called his actual still wine and wine that had a little bit of bubbles, the wine of the gods. Now, when he was going down into the cellars and he would find these broken, all these broken glasses of the bottles because the French glass was really thin, he was frustrated and he was trying to get the bubbles out of the champagne. He didn't want them there, especially because he couldn't keep them in an enclosure, et cetera, et cetera. So, so even though Dom is thought of as kind of the father of champagne in France, he has a lot to do with it, but it actually was the, um, the champagne method was actually perfected by Veuve Clicquot, by the house of Veuve Clicquot. So, so good things here. Champagne is in France. It's about... I don't know, 90 kilometers, give or take, northwest of Paris. Another little thing we're going to learn about scotch and champagne. Champagne also has five main regions. There's 17 other sub-regions. Sub-regions, regions, not going through it, speeding through here. 12 minutes. Types of grapes. Champagne has three prim primary types of grapes that you hear in all kinds of champagnes, which is Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir, Marvera, and Chardonnay. But it actually is composed of up to seven grapes that are allowed by French law in the AOC of Champagne to blend to make champagne. Important things you need to know if you're going out with your lovely significant other and you know nothing about champagne, these are some things to keep in mind. So the Prestige Cuvée is the best grapes from the vineyard. The Blanc de Noir is, oops, are grapes that are coming from red grapes that produce Obviously, goldy colored champagne. Blanc de Blanc is pure Chardonnay grapes that are used to make it. And then rosé, as we all know, are grapes that have that nice, uh, they're red grapes, but they leave the skins in contact to give it that nice rosy color. So, how to drink champagne. You drink a lot of it, that's what you do, actually. But in regards to typically how it's drank, I'm going to give you a few little, little tips about drinking and the bottles that it's, it's enclosed in. First major important rule, if you have a nice bottle of champagne, don't be an asshole and pop the bottle and spray it all over the place. Go buy some shit champagne like Dada Life Champagne because they actually made it and it tastes like ass and use that. Or I, forget, I even forget, what's like some of those, the old bad, bad champagne, like not that Corbel's horrible, but... Sparkling wine. Ah, oh, Martina and Rossi. Yeah, I used to drink some shit stuff in college that I thought was amazing. Anyway, like what? Oh, no. Corbel and orange juice. That was the mimosa of choice in university for me, and which is still acceptable. And I will put orange juice and everything up to Vouv, <laughs> yellow label. Anything above that, I, again, know your audience. I will find blasphemy if you're putting orange juice in Dom, but get, then again, you bought the bottle, that's your business. That's your own sitch, enjoy your own pleasure. Some of the other major faux pas I've seen in Champagne, done quite often, especially by inexperienced servers that you might see at a restaurant, is that they will go into the back, they will take the, I uh, wanna take one of them off? Okay, he'll do the demo. So an inexperienced server will come out with a Champagne take the cage off of the champagne and walk like across a restaurant with it, with the cage off. Don't, 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 don't do that. That's silly talk. We don't do that. 
Also, anyone who's decent opening champagne. No, you're not going to demo that really well, but you can demo some of it. So basically, okay, that's not too bad, but yeah, it, it's not really intended to make a huge ass pop. But if you're celebrating, you want to spread all over everybody again. That's your own damn business. So that's it. Uh, oh, fifth, right on time. Done. I'm out. It didn't go. Oh, it didn't work. What did I do? Oh, did you do the sound? Sad trouble. I finished on time, and I brought booze for everybody. Not everyone. Sure. Everybody can have a little drop. <laughs> Thank you, Sec Barbie. If you have any questions, she will be at the bar, right? Is there something? I'll be here. She'll be here if you have any questions, but we probably do have to vacate the room. But before we do that, Ms. Katie. At the bar in the back of the room. No, we're going to have to vacate this room because I'm going to have to vacate my bladder. So plus, <laughs> plus three for the walk-on music. Oh, my God. That was amazing. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, plus one for the very, very nice bribes that I have here. This is, <laughs> this is fantastic. You followed instructions. Well done. Um, plus one for providing libations for all. I mean, that's lovely. I, you know, I mean, I'm tempted to give it a plus two, but we'll see. The judges have to deliberate. Anyway, um, plus one for audience participation in the talk itself. Uh, that was actually a unique one um, where you were polling pretty much constantly about, you know, what people knew about scotch and champagne and sparkling wine. Um, let's see. Had to give you a ding not because, well, basically I'm a judge and, you know, our opinions differ. You said that you can put whatever kinky shit you want in the scotch. And I'm like, no, you cannot. Or no, good, no, 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 I'm just, no. So anyway, no, I mean, look, you know what? Look, I, just different strokes for different folks. Okay. But I'm a judge and this is, this is my call. Plus one, uh, I did not know the fact that the women held the recipes in Scotch history. So that was a bit of Scotch history that I did not know. So thank you for educating me. And um, plus one on the, uh, the, the notion of using shit champagne slash sparkling wine to spray everyone. Because seriously, like, I mean, d d don't waste it. So that was a plus eight, minus three, total score of five. Yeah, you had me with the George Thurgood when you came on, and it, it just, it, the whole conversation went up from there. Congratulations. Uh, I was copying from Katie again, but no. Um, I, there were just a few, I mean, one of the things that I really wanted to emphasize is, is I know we're all really into InfoSec, right? But it is awesome to have hobbies outside. Um, yeah. Self care. <laughs> like, I learn so much from. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that, but thank. <laughs> no, 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 no. I shouldn't say that. Freaking NPR, man. I hate them. Anyway. <laughs> but I do donate. Okay, so, and then also just really, I, I, you made the point several times through, and I think this is a good point for everybody, is to, like, if you're ever going to speak, you, you know, really research your audience and, um, and your judges, too. I meant, damn it, I'm posting too much stuff online. But um, anyway, I learned a lot. I know how to drink. Fortunately, I learned enough that I can impress my wife now, so thank you. But can I share awesome more? job, and I, it, it seems like she's giving out more stuff, so I was, I was gonna come on up if you would like a drink. I was going to share one tidbit that I learned that I didn't even know about. So we now drink out of champagne flutes that look like this, but a lot of you people, do you know like the champagne, the cups that you sit, like in the whole like cheers to you, Leonardo DiCaprio thing? Do you know why it's shaped that way, allegedly? Okay. So, yeah, allegedly it was Marie Antoinette's bosom that it was shaped after. It's a, okay. apparently a horrible rumor, but I like the story, so I'm going to stick with that one. <laughs> These are like Madonna ones. Uh, 
Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. I will pour as much. We're going to pour as much as we have, and you might, we might have enough glassware. This seems to be working on and off again, so. Um, but, so, so as we enjoy our uh, libations as, as we close down the fire talks here, I just wanted to give one big, uh, I wanted to thank our judges, so if, they, if everybody, while they're drinking, can please have a, so. Miss Katie, I just, like, you are so into it. I love the point system. I have to create a, I have to create a rubric next year, if I'm saying that correctly. And I also want to give a big thanks to our keynote speaker, who you know, stuck around and helped contribute to this event. So thank you once again. No, seriously, you guys, um, the fact that, that we're in D.C. and we've got access to, you know, to folks who are part of the policy frameworks and all the legislative bodies and everything, I think that's a huge deal. I think it's a huge deal when they stay and commune with us like this in our weird rituals. So, yeah, absolutely. Big hand, seriously. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, NIST is like a huge freaking deal. I've been reading your all documentation for like 20 years, so thank you. Lots of good stuff. So since since we at NIST don't pick um, winners and, and losers, I had to take a look at this very seriously. And, and, and so here's what I, me as a judge, here is what I'm offering. I, I am offering to share my wonderful moose head with each one of the participants. So, Bo, you get Mr. Moosehead for 30 days, Tess, 30 days, John, 30 days, Bryson, 45 days. You can commune. We'll work out, we'll work out visitation schedules at the end of this. Um, it's custody. Alex and Steve, you need to share for 45 days. Cheryl, 30 days. And Aaron, you get the moose for 60 days. And you can have it during New Year's Eve, so you have, you know, you and the moose are there working together. Yay. Thank you. I, I will drink with the moose. You know if what? anybody wants champagne, you have to bring but a glass up to me. I just think this is the best fire talks ever. So, <laughs> whoo! So, big thanks to you, the audience, for making this an awesome fire talks. Yay! Clap for yourself. Um, and then, like usual, I think, I believe this is like our, you know, 10-year anniversary. So... So I want to thank Bruce, or no, excuse me, let me rephrase that. I want to thank Heidi yeah, and Bruce <laughs> for letting um, Mubix and a lot of other folks probably like 10 years ago start this at the, um, what's the old hotel that we used to have it at? The Wardman Marriott? Yeah. So literally the first hot fire talks was at the end of the hall. And Mubix and a bunch of folks organized that. Uh, and then somewhere along the line, I took it over. And it's just been fun running this ever since. But the big thanks is out is to Heidi and Bruce for supporting this through the years. Um, 
So thank you, Heidi and Bruce, and we all clap, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but for now, I did it. Uh, I do so. No, 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 no. That's out there. So. I bid adieu. We are going to announce the winner at the closing of ShmooCon, so please stick around for that. We have a um, $500 first prize, which we're going to judge, 250 second prize, and a 125 third prize. So um, please stick around to see who the winner is going to be. So with that, everybody have a good evening, and please exit at least this facility so that the rest of the SMUCON staff, staff can lock down this room and head to the bar. Thank you. And don't forget, uh, there's a, a government shutdown party on the 10th floor. <laughs>